I'm a college track runner at West Liberty University who mainly runs the longer dist distance events, mainly being the mile, 1500 meters, the 5k, and the event that I will talk about today being the steeplechase. The steeplechase is 3000 meters long, which is 200 meters short of being two miles. Uh, for this fact, most people that run the steeplechase base the time that they should run off of their two-mile projected time. So roughly if you uh, can run two miles in 10 minutes, then you roughly should be able to run a steeplechase in about 10 minutes. Um, the steeplechase is widely regarded as one of the most um, difficult track events to complete, up with being the 800 meters, 400 meter hurdles, and then the steeplechase. Those are probably the top three most difficult ones. So today I will describe uh, what actually is a steeplechase and how to practice it using a game, games approach as an athlete to get better at the event as a whole. So as I mentioned before, it is 3,000 meters long and uh, a usual outdoor track is 400 meters long. So that would mean the whole event is seven and a half meter, seven and a half laps around a track. So uh, runners will start at the 200 meter mark and then start running. And then when they come through the start finish line, they have seven laps to go. So for the steeplechase, there are five barriers and these barriers are different than traditional hurdles because they are stationary. So they are a lot bigger and they will not move when you hit them because they're very strong. Um, also, they are like flat across. So they're a lot longer than hurdles too because um, a lot of people have to jump them at the same time in a race. And so I mentioned there are five. So they're, they're spread out around the track about uh, 70, 75 meters in between each roughly. And there are four traditional uh, barriers, uh, one being on like with 100 meters to go in the middle of the 100. And there's one right past the start finish line and one about 50 meters later and then one about 50, 60 meters after that. And then the fifth one is a special one because it's called the water barrier, being that there is a pit of water right after the barrier which is 12 feet long and in the deepest portion of the water barrier it is about three feet deep so for this water bar for this uh, barrier hurdle as a whole um, you traditionally want to jump on the barrier and then the water pit will be right afterwards so you jump on the barrier and then over the water pit and then you can land back on the track and for the water pit it starts with a deep end and then as it goes further it gets more shallow so as a runner in this race you'd want to land in the more shallow end so your body as a whole will get less wet and it will slow down slow you down less and you can keep running um, the goal for the water pit is to land in and get out as quickly as possible so you want to jump on top of the steeple barrier with one foot and then your opposite foot, you want to land uh, as far out in the water pit as possible, um, being in the south shallow end if you are able to do so. And then when your foot comes back again, you want to land back on the track. So it's one foot on top of the barrier, one foot in the water pit, uh, hopefully in the shallow end, and then the next foot right back on the track to cycle back into your running form. And that will slow you down as least as possible. Uh, common mistake with landing in the water pit is most people will land two feet in the water which will uh, stop their momentum as a whole and then they have they'll be more wet which would slow them down and they have to get back into the running form which could uh, most coaches say that could take three to four seconds per lap which can add up pretty quickly seven and a half laps that could be about 30 seconds in a race and you could beat a person by a good portion if you do that so uh, one key thing for the steeplechase and most track races as a whole are you want to wear spikes. And I brought my pair that I wear uh, for most track races and these are my favorite for the steeple. So your spikes are going to be on the front around where your toes are at. So this portion is what you want to land on top of the barrier. 
and the the bear all the barriers are rubber so if you land with your spikes on them you're able to get a good grip so you won't slip or you have at least at least uh less likely chance of slipping so if you land on top of the barrier with your spikes you grip into the rubber and you want to land on this portion so you grip and then you uh follow through so grip and then follow through and although the water barrier is traditionally the only barrier that you want to land on top of with your spikes. The other barriers you can just jump like a traditional hurdle, just jump over them, like hurdle form or however you can get over them because you keep running faster and you can just like cycle through your running form. Uh, the only difference with this would be later in the race, you would be more tired. So you may have to land on top of the barrier to get over it because you feel like if you jump straight over, you might hit the barrier and the barrier is a lot sturdier and it won't move if you hit it because it's not like a normal hurdle. So people will be scared to jump over. So they want to jump on top to get over it. And that's common in like the later stage of the race, like the fifth, sixth and the final lap. So it just depends uh, how good you are at the actual race. And the better you are, you normally will jump over it. So, um, so to be a good steepler overall, you want to have a lot of strength because it, it is a short race. It's less than two miles, but it's very taxing on your body. Like you would feel like you're running a 5k, almost a 10k hit sometimes because of how much goes into the race, all the jumping and all the water barrier really takes a toll on your legs after 10, 11 minutes, depending how slow or fast you were running. So you want to have a strong base coming into this while also having being fast if you want to run a fast time because you just want to get the best out of your body. Um, currently, the world, well, the American leader for the steeplechase right now is a man named Evan Yeager, and he has ran eight flat. And to run that fast pace, that fast pace you have to be have a lot of speed in your legs while also being strong over the barriers to keep running. Um so also for this uh for the steeplechase so yes um so for practicing for the steeplechase runners should jump over the barriers in practice uh doing drills such as sprints over the barrier maybe four or five at the end of a practice uh wearing spikes to get used to them just jumping over the land barrier the one without the water at first and then once they build up their confidence uh coaches can Im implement water jumps maybe three or four, because water jumping in general can be very taxing on the legs. So you don't want to overdo it, especially going into a big race. Uh, but with that being said, it is good to get used to the water barrier a little bit before you actually do it in a real race. I personally did not jump the water until I was actually in a physical race. So that was a little scary. But once you get over it a few times, you feel a lot better and have a lot more confidence in yourself that you can actually do it. So I advise like new steeplechasers um, to do it a few times in practice to get a better feeling for it. So because if they don't have the confidence that they can do it by themselves, it'll be a lot harder to do it when you're in an actual race and there's like five, six, maybe 10 people at times early on in the stages of the right race, jumping the water barrier at the same time. And you want to make sure you can get good footing because if you don't get good footing and then you have a lot of people around, then there's a good chance you can fall. So you don't want that to happen. So you just want to make sure you have the confidence that you can get over it and clear it and do it safely. So talk to your coaches before the race and make sure they, when you're practicing, that you feel confident doing it. So in review, it's good to practice this a few times before you actually race it. Um, you need to focus on your form, getting in, into the water, getting out of the water, and try and be strong and have speed going through because if you have both of those things you're going to feel a lot better during the race you'll probably be tired at some point because you're exerting your body and it's a tough race so just keep those things in mind and you can be a better steeplechaser thank you